there was that great saying, uh, you know, like a cabin in the woods to a bear, it's technology. But then to a human being, a cabin in the woods is nature. I mean, it's the same with digital technology. There are some people who think the music of the future will sound like this. Can, if we like, go to these sound generators here, electronic generators, and using all of these, we can build up any sound we can possibly imagine almost. In terms of the history of British electronic music, I think we're a nation of kind of hobbyists and tinkerers, and we like to build and make things. Unlike the traditional composer, she uses no musical instruments and no musicians. Electronic music came up against the labour movement at the BBC because they were going to put the orchestral musicians out of work, which I guess is kind of related to where we are now um, when we speak about, you know, computer technology and music. The big positive is kind of having this kind of collaboration. There's a lot of things that machines can do that humans can't. It's quite, it's quite unreal, really. I don't think we'd be able to envisage, envisage like kind of musically what it might be able to do. Hopefully. I'm quite interested in art history and kind of looking back to those those pioneers in, in British music history and kind of looking at the, the technologies that, that they used, um, especially because I work a lot with electronic music and there's always this interface between the physical and the digital. So I like to think how we can kind of take from the past, look to the future and create these new kind of performance systems. Electronic music, what makes it what makes it distinct from other music is the technology um, and the fact that it, that's kind of what took music away from being a more communal experience to being something that one person could do with a machine. And that is, detail is also really what informs my practice because I, I started off being kind of, um, you know, doing music in high school, which was things like choir, things like band with other people and then when you leave school you suddenly realise, oh, you know, everyone's gone off and, you know, how do you play music with people? So the computer kind of rapidly became the answer to that for me. When you're making music with code, what you're doing is kind of, you're expressing directly through kind of a language saying, okay, I want this kick drum sample and I want to play it this many times in this many cycles. Um, and so kind of building things from the ground up a lot quicker. The other thing is also just kind of usability. Um, you know, when you're, when you're working with tech, it's, you know, I have a whole setup here and you can only go so far until you realise there's something you want to do that you can't do with what's available. And then, you know, for a lot of people, the natural answer is, well, what are you going to do? Build a, like, you know, you might first of all buy an adapter, buy a second adapter until you've got like three adapters for your adapter. And then eventually you might just decide to build it. Technology wise, I'm always like trying to, yeah, just push it around, I suppose. Just see, like reroute things, have a look. I've always been pretty exploratory like that. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I think of myself in terms of like sound design a lot of the time. Sometimes I'm just quite happy to work on, on just making sound, like not necessarily making a track or music or anything. But of course, technology is constantly moving, you know, new plugins, new software, new doors, new synths, new whatever. So, in a way, you just ride that wave, I guess, as an electronic music producer. You just, I don't have like a setup that my setup is in technology, technologized, so it's always going to move, it's always going to keep changing. So, the software that I use to make music um, generally is called Tidal Cycles. Um, it's a piece of software that's been developed by um, a guy in Sheffield called Alex McLean um, and it's a really interesting piece of software because it's so kind of free and open. I have been kind of really influenced by the works of um, Delia Derbyshire and um, Daphne Oram um, in their kind of work in the Radiophonic Workshop um, and being part of Algorave I kind of see it as something that's kind of quite similar. Making music or doing fun stuff with it rather than just kind of asking it what the weather's like today. AI 
yeah, it's about it's about the who has access to that and who's kind of in power of that and who's controlling that. But I think there's um, great potential for kind of artistic collaboration with, with AI and how humans interact with machines. Um, it's kind of a quite a po poetic dynamic that we've always had. Um, and I think this kind of collaboration with, with AI could actually lead to new kind of sonic worlds and possibilities. Um, there's also kind of a more sinister side potentially, whereas, you know, there's the whole kind of um, hype around machines making music automatically for us and where does that lead? Um, but I think people are more discerning than that and I think people have, have taste and people know what they like and, and especially in electronic music, people are really interested in, in the tech and people will work out how you've done that and which bit is real, which bit isn't real. But it's about kind of also blurring those boundaries and kind of playing with the technology to create something original. I think like anything that that's, that's that powerful, evidently, that, that's also that um, tied into uh, the, its model is that of a human. Realistically, this is the, the, the end game, is the, you know, to, for them to be imperceptible. Um, as things, and I, and I think that that's you, know, you should be. I mean, it, you'd be you'd be crazy if you don't think that that could be problematic. It's not to say that, that we shouldn't use it or any of that, because for me that's just inevitable. I wouldn't describe AI or computer music as completely soulless, because the thing that I I really love about working with machines is those kind of errors or the thing the unexpected outcomes, the things that go wrong. I think when you work, especially in electronic music or with kind of electronics or machinery. Um, you still have to make lots of choices. So where you reach in the end is a series of choices that you've made that's very personal to you. And though those outcomes may be unintended or unexpected, sometimes they're the most beautiful or kind of insane things that you've ever heard. So that's kind of where my love of working with machines comes from. It's about that dynamic between the human and the machine. To me, what's interesting, you know, what's interesting that will come out of these new kind of multimodal ways of, of kind of music creation is new ways of listening. Um, just, you know, to take people away from passively. I think music went down a very dangerous path and it, and it might be actually a reaction to that because of what kind of happened with, you know, Napster and streaming and all of that, um, where music was this kind of MP3. So we're thinking about how to bring the life back to it. And I do think about that a lot. Um, you know, what can you do to restore the value to music? And, you know, one of the answers is, you know, presenting it in the ways that people like Tremors TV are. Tremors is like a hardcore queer collective. Um, it's made up of lots of different artists and musicians and producers and artists of all types. And we're basically, at the moment, kind of trying to create the nightclub of the future. And then it's like, okay, like, how can we make that happen? And it's not always, it's not always technology. It's, it's like, who do you bring? Like, are the people, and it's how do people think is a lot of it. Like, who are the people you're bringing and involved who are thinking that way? And who are free already in their, like, minds and are, like, open to taking it to the next level. So we kind of bring all the, creativity and all the experimentation in the night and we don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> it's always, it's the same with the music and the visuals, it's just about the emotional connection that people feel. So I think in, in the UK we, we, we need more DIY music spaces at the moment, um, completely for independent music. Um, it's really important that people get to go out there and experiment and test out their ideas. There's definitely a difference here to, to Berlin where there's more kind of, you know, shop windows where you can test out your noise equipment, for example, or kind of collaborate a bit more easily. So having access to space and access to materials kind of aids collaboration. One thing about, like, London, which is um, important, is there's nowhere to just gather and do stuff together. There's, it's so expensive, like even for musicians to do, um, like have a studio and like do music and freak out together. And we've like, <laughs> we've like almost made the club night itself our studio. Digital is, is it's either an end or a beginning, depending on how you're using it. I find it really exciting. The thing that I really love about music technology is about the, the people and the communities that come together. 
I think for the people who are using it, you know, in a kind of open-ended way, um, so using it to connect, using it to create. So, you know, focusing on the good aspects of what it is to live in a digital age. Collaboration between UK and kind of everybody else kind of coming together and making new and inventive stuff, it's kind of really positive. I feel hopeful about that. The fact that it's put creation in so many people's hands, that we, you know, you can make a video, you can make a, you know, 3D animation. Um, that's what we can do with it. And then there's the other question of what they can do with it. And I think as long as we keep on creating and try to create at a higher volume, then I think that then we'll win.